good. All right. So today, guys, we're going to work on a pie crust, all right? So what I want to do is actually put together a pie, but I think right now we're going to just work on putting a pie crust together. Um, so I went ahead, I got some of the ingredients, I got our bowl. Um, as I'm thinking, I'm missing one thing, but I will get to that once we get going. Anyway, so the pie crust is basically flour, all right, and a little salt. It says shortening, but I'm going to use butter in mine. All right, and some ice water. That's all the ingredients you really need for this, so it's really not a lot of ingredients. Um, but you wanna make sure that your um, pie crust is rolled out nicely and you're all set with a pan, which I have to still get. And um, another thing I didn't get is, what's, other, what's something if I said, well, you need to roll out the pie crust, what should I have? A rolling, a rolling pin. Do you think somebody could maybe get me a rolling pin ready? Because that's the one thing I didn't think it was far ahead about a rolling pin. Anyway, so with this, all right, we have apples cooking. I'm actually cooking the apples a little bit, soften them up. If you're using fresh apples, we could uh, just probably go straight from using fresh. But since time is kind of not, we don't have all the time to do fresh apples, I'm just going to, um, I just did canned apples. I cooked them. I put some uh, brown sugar, cinnamon in them. And then we might use like a cornstarch slurry to thicken it up, thicken them up. And then we're supposed to put a uh, crumb topping on this. This is like an apple crisp uh, pie. All right. So anyway, we're going to just worry about the um, pie crust for now. We'll get that going and I'll show you guys how to do it and what tools we need. So we need one cup and a quarter cup of flour. So of course we need what to measure the flour? Just, just tell me. A leveler. Yeah, but what kind of, what kind of measure? One measure cup. One measure cup. So one cup, right? And we're gonna fill the cup. So this is our cup of flour. What's next? It says one and a quarter cup. What else? One quarter dry measure cup. One quarter dry measuring cup. Okay, so that's one slash four, and we're gonna add that. Right, and there's our one quarter cup. And so now we need salt. The salt, it says a quarter teaspoon. So again, I'm gonna measure over something, not over this in case we, sp we spill over the top. We don't wanna go in our dry ingredients, so we're gonna go on a recipe and we're just gonna do this quarter teaspoon. Okay, level it off and there's our quarter teaspoon. And at this point you can actually mix this together. Just combine it. And that's all the dry greens it calls for. The next thing it calls for is, this recipe says half a cup of shortening. Um, I like putting butter in mine. Sometimes I actually do divide it. I do like two ounces of um, the butter, and then I would do two ounces of shortening. Um, but anyway, so you guys remember, a half a cup is how many ounces? We've done this like three um, or four times. A cup is eight ounces. No, half four. a cup. Four. Tori? Four. Four. Correct. So I already have the stick, which is four ounces. And what I'm going to do, guys, remember how we did the biscuits a little while ago when you guys were here? What did we do to the butter to make it easier to break up in here and cut in? Did you it? Well, we did what? What am I doing now? Cut it up. We cut it up into smaller chunks first. All right. Did that shoot out of there? All right. All right. So I have these in, and remember what we cut the butter in the, into the flour with? What was this tool? Um, pastry blender. Pastry blender. So I'm gonna do that. So you just press and you twist. So if you guys can see from the camera. And does anybody remember the size that we know when this is ready? Does anybody remember I said that one time, I believe, small crumbs or pea size? So what's the size of a pea? About that big, right? So this is very similar how we did our biscuits. We cut the uh, butter into the flour.
And then you guys remember when we added our liquid, did we use the pastry blender to mix it in or did we do something else? A liquid measuring cup. Yeah, but how did we blend that in? By, uh... Did I use this and blend the water in when we did the biscuits, you guys remember? No, what did I use? Um, What's this called? Um, we, uh, had it, we had it in our sheet, Todd? Um, gloved hand. Yes, the gloved hand. All right, that means we just mix with our hands. As long as we have a glove on, we're good. Gloved hand. All right. So what I do, sometimes I don't add the whole thing because I'm not really sure if it needs it. So this says three tablespoons of water, ice water, cold water. So one, two, and I'm gonna start mixing this like this, and then I'm gonna see if I have to add another tablespoon. And I probably will, because it does look, does look pretty dry. And sometimes I might even wanna add just a little bit more if I still can't get it to combine. See how it's still like a lot of dry ingredients, the flour still not combining? So I'm just gonna go ahead and add one more tablespoon, and we'll see where that gets us. You guys got to work this dough a little bit so it all combines. See how it's starting to come together now? I still might need a little bit of water, but let me just see if I can get this to combine. to getting everything in here. All right, so actually I didn't need the extra one. See how it's kind of nice form? Not really any flour left in there. So at this point, I can turn this onto the table. I didn't what? The table? Yes, I did, I cleaned it before you guys came in. See, I got my sanitizer. Um, so anyway, when you do, when you roll these, this dough out, you do want what? A little flour down so it doesn't stick to the table. And I don't want this water on here because that's not gonna help me out. Make sure your table's nice and dry. And as you see, it's combined nice. And I'm just gonna dust a little flour on here. And don't do like a bunch, guys. You shouldn't do a lot. Because what's gonna happen is the flour is gonna get absorbed in here and it's gonna dry out. It's gonna be harder to roll this out. So I like to make a nice ball out of this. Try to make it as smooth as I can. And then I'm actually gonna start flattening it with my hands. And then I'm gonna add a little flour to the top of this also. And then we're gonna take our rolling pin. We'll get this out of the way. Move a little bit of elbow room here. And the thing is, you gotta churn your rolling pin. See how I'm churning each time to keep this dough round. What I find is a lot of times you guys wanna just keep rolling, rolling, rolling one way. What happens to the dough if I keep rolling this way? Is it gonna be round or oval? Oval. It's, start, it's gonna start getting and turning to be oval. We don't want that, we wanna keep it nice and round. And what I do is I sometimes I lift this up and make sure I got enough flour that it's gonna to continue to not stick. If you feel, if you see that it's starting to grab a hold of the rolling pin and pull up, that's when you need what? A little bit more flour, right? See how I'm kind of keeping it round by turning the rolling pin back and forth? Get that out of my way. All right. So right now, look at guys, is that pretty close to the size of a pie? I would say pretty, pretty close. Let, let me get the actual pan. 
See, there's another thing I should have got. All right, how do you know if it's the right size? Just do this. Flip your pan over. Is it the size of the pan a little bigger? You want it a little bigger because when it goes into this, it's going to take up more of the, the dough, all right, the crust. So you do want it a little bigger, but I would say that's pretty darn close to the size we want. If we're a little nervous and we want to go a little bigger, we can go a little bit bigger. Now you got to be gentle with this because it will break on you pretty easily. So what I usually like to do, I like to fold it in half. I bring my pan right next to it. And of course I didn't want to do that, but and then you go about halfway. All right, and then just bring your crust back over. And then I'm just gonna lightly bring the rest of this into the pan. And so we have our pie crust all filled in nice and you wanna make sure it's in there nice. And then what you could do is see all this extra. You can, some people actually leave it when they put the other, let's say if I want another top for like actual pie, a crust on top, you might wanna leave this so you can combine the other one and press it together. But since we're doing like this apple crisp, we're not gonna do a dough top, we're just gonna do a crumb top. So I'm gonna go around and basically I'm just gonna cut the excess dough off. See, I just point the blade to where the edge of the pan is and I just go around and I cut that extra dough off. All right, and then you could do a couple things. Some people take a fork and they go around Some people just do this. Just a little fork mark and go around like this. That's fine. A lot of people, that's very easy to do. I like sometimes just to take my finger and my thumb and do this. See how I'm kind of making just like a little edge like that. So it's whatever you feel is easier for you. Some people have a hard time doing this. I just do finger and thumb and then I press it with the other finger and I just go around like that. All right. And what you might want to do too, is just put a few holes in the bottom so the air can escape when it's cooking. And there's our pie crust. All right, guys. And then we'll put our apples in here and we'll do the crumb topping and that'll be it. All right. You good? We're good.